exotic cars, lavish apartments, and sleek shopping complexes. Fox Files cameras captured these images inside the Islamic Republic of Iran. Allah. Ayatollah Khomeini's revolution was meant to rescue the oppressed, redistribute the wealth, and make piety, rather than purchasing power, the status symbol. But as most of Iran now struggles under sanctions, a small group of super-rich Iranians are living large. Cars are the biggest status symbol in Iran. Fox Files sat down with Babak Emamian, who is chairman of the London-based British Iranian Business Association. To buy an average Bugatti, it costs a million dollars. And you have to pay the import duty 100%. So somebody driving a Bugatti in Tehran, you have to have paid $2 million. Iran is a country of traders and business people for the last 3,000 years. It's been on the Silk Road. For centuries, the Silk Road supplied a royal dynasty dubbed the Peacock Throne with riches. The last Shah, Reza Pahlavi, and his beautiful wife, Farah, didn't hesitate to show off their wealth. In 1979, the Iranian Revolution drove the monarchy out of the country, promising a more equitable society. But a new class of Iranians moved in, benefiting from a sort of cronyism. Despite the squeeze from sanctions, in 2010, Iran sold $73 billion worth of oil, with much of the profits going to the elite. People who are connected are accumulating wealth unrivaled in the last 34 years of the Islamic Republic's existence. Dr. Merdad Emadi is an Iranian economist based in London. We are now seeing houses and villas priced in the region of 5 to 25 US million dollars. People who have six or seven super luxury cars, Porsches, Lamborghinis, Maseratis. Porsche opened a dealership in Tehran and in 2011 sold more cars than in any other Middle Eastern country. There are people who have no problem driving these expensive cars in Iran. So who are these elite Iranians buying up multi-million dollar apartments and driving around in fancy cars? With tough international sanctions in place, how do they manage to accumulate such fantastic wealth? What started ostensibly as a religious movement toppling the Shah in 1978 has evolved into a mafia-like organization that controls business and all elements of Iranian society. Mark Wallace is a former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations for management and reform. He's currently CEO of United Against Nuclear Iran. What you've seen since the revolution is the mullahs and the religious elites infiltrating that economy. There's a select group of elite clerics who've become filthy writ political connections or corruption. One of the founding fathers of the Islamic Republic and former president Ayatollah Rafsanjani is thought to be one of the richest men in Iran. Rafsanjani has been a dominant political and religious leader in Iran. Religious clergy who are part of the political apparatus seemingly they have benefited quite significantly. Many of the super rich have been linked to Iran's unusual and complex network of charitable foundations known as bonyads. Fox News has reported extensively on the ongoing case of Iran's New York-based charity the Alavi Foundation. One of the quickest ways to make huge amounts of money is to become an important person in one of these ponyards. Born after the Iranian Revolution, these so-called charity foundations confiscated assets from the fleeing royal family, existing businesses, and ordinary Iranians. In many cases, powerful clerics use them as their own personal slush funds. They started importing goods, selling them without paying taxes, import duties. And then you have Iran's oligarchs. The 200, 300 families, they are just hugely wealthy. There are no billionaires yet, but there are lots of people with multi-millions. This system is kept in place by the iron fist of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, the so-called protectors of the Islamic regime. The IRGC and the Iranian elites have for many years purchased and sought the finest of Western goods. And unfortunately, over the years, because of petrodollars, the elites have had the ability to purchase these goods. Life is becoming harder for Iranian businesses. Though President Ahmadinejad denies it, much of the world community accuses Iran of pursuing nuclear weapons. 
the u s. and european union have imposed dozens of sanctions targeting iran's international trade and banking system pressure by u a and i and others caused porsche close its tehran showroom currently car company fiat is under pressure to stop doing business with the islamic republic in may fiat announced it was suspending sales there has it become much more difficult for these rich iranians to get their hands on cars or whatever else they buy? It is more difficult, uh, but if you want it, they would find a way of getting the Porsche to you. Most often through the United Arab Emirates, just across the Gulf from Iran. The Emirates, uh, because of very historic trading routes, has been a, a key trading partner, both legally and illegally, for many years. There still is illicit trade in Iran and loopholes. In 2011, when German Chancellor Angela Merkel's retired jet was sold, it ended up in the hands of the Iranians via Ukrainian middlemen. It is probably the best time now to make money in Iran because corruption has become endemic. All this as many average Iranians squeak by on the equivalent of $4,000 a year, yet pay more for meat and some other staples than Americans do. There have been reports that Iran is suffering from rampant inflation. Just recently, the cost of milk and bread and chicken has skyrocketed. The resentment must build, I would think, or are these people living in such a bubble that they don't come into contact with average or lower income Iranians? That bubble could burst through resentment. So I think you're seeing a great people, an industrious, hardworking people, who are fed up with the cronyism and the corruption of a theocratic dictatorship.